Oh God. Uh, I'm I'm not even gonna. I I I. I think a lot of my perspectives on on masculinity was shaped by the values that my father has, uh, his strength, his athleticism, uh, using his strengths to uh, stand up for people who needed help, uh, to you know, be there for uh, supporting the little guy, for countering bullies. Uh, being a man is being um, strong and a source of support for those who need it. He was born in 1919, the year women got the vote in this country. He, you know, he had me when he was in his early 50s. So he was very much of a time that um, wasn't as aware and evolved, perhaps, as uh, I like to think we're, we're becoming now. So the philosophical foundation he gave me on being humanist was very much there. But he was not a feminist, uh, and it, it wouldn't have been a, a word that he thought of engaging with. My perspective on so many things, on uh, looking at my wife as a, as a partner uh, in everything I do, uh, which was a dynamic that wasn't there in, in my parents' relationship, is uh, one of those things that I, you know, I very much diverge from my father. A number of years ago, I was wearing a beautiful cable knit turtleneck that my uh, wife had got me and had a blazer over it, and I was feeling like I was dressed pretty cool, and a random bunch of guys who didn't recognize me just sort of walked into the hotel and said, hey, turtleneck boy. And I was like, oh, I, I, I like this look. And, and we always have moments where we wonder uh, if uh, we're fitting some idealized or normative model that uh, is ridiculous, but you know, questioning one's behavior and one's choices is 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 human. <laughs> oh God! Um, as a teenager, I was too skinny. I had terrible skin. I had big, thick glasses. I. I had a nose that didn't fit my face. You know, I tried to wear uh, pink flamingo ties and bright green suspenders, ironically, but it was looking back just sort of sad. I went through puberty in an all-boys school in Montreal uh, for four years, and then when the girls finally arrived in, uh, in grade 11 uh, at that school, uh, I had, <laughs> I had no game. I had, I had no ability to uh, engage with girls. Uh, it was, it was a very, very difficult experience, and I was hyper self-conscious about uh, about who I was, and deeply insecure about about you know everything, <laughs> everything you are, and how people look at you. I think that's part of what being a teenager is. God, that's just, so many worries. So many worries as a dad for, for, for all my kids, including, you know, those uh, years that are still far enough away where they're going to get driver's licenses. I really want to make sure that my sons are raised from now uh, with an understanding and awareness of the power dynamics that surround them and uh, surround their sister uh, and are taught and learned to be allies from the very beginning. What kids are exposed to today on the internet uh, means we have to be a lot more active in the conversations, the difficult conversations that I think need to be as explicit with our kids today as explicit as they'll see tomorrow on the internet. A lot of well-meaning folks are saying, oh my gosh, I have to change everything about me. I, I have to give away all sorts of power. It's not about losing power. It's about sharing it and using it for uh, productive, positive outcomes, whether it's in a business or in politics or in society in general. There's a mindset shift that will benefit us all when women don't feel worried that they're going to be uh, in vulnerable positions. 
I think it's important that people be honest to who they are. I am someone who shares my emotions fairly readily. It's how I'm programmed. If we're sitting around watching a movie uh, and there's a moment of particular poignancy, I can feel even in the dark of the living room, the family is going to turn towards me to see if my eyes are welling up. And I say, well, the fact that you're looking towards me means that you're feeling your own eyes welling up. So it's one of those things where I have always been someone who, you know, reacts strongly to uh, emotional stimuli. And um, that means I've cried in public uh, a number of times, more than perhaps the stoic, you know, manly man uh, should in the old way of looking at things. But it's who I am and you know, if I can be a, a trigger for conversations or an enabler for other people to be, okay, it's, it's okay to, you know, to shed a few tears when you know, something really affects you emotionally, well, then that's part of what a, a, my, my role and my responsibility can be.